Now, Secret looking good here in the Summit too. They're four and one. We have Simba, sponsored by Charlie. I'm playing that Doom that puts S4 onto the Ven. Puppy will be handling Marana. For now, these three grouped up near the top rune, and then on the bottom side of the map, Kroki. We play your Necropose, Big Daddy on the Ogre. We might have an early level one skirmish as we introduce Empire Silent. But I'll play an initial storm. Oh, we don't have any games now. Let's try to fix that while the fight breaks out. They go on the Silent with the arrow follow up, and the Viper will be. Very easy first, but I mean, first honestly, blood. that didn't look that scary because it it's like, well, you storm out into Doom right clicks, but then the arrow comes through. So, just to very briefly introduce Empire, we have Resolution playing the solo mid death prophet. You're all playing Tide in the capable hands of Yoki Dolo, who's been sensational on his supports while we play in the Scarath Mage. Double Always want to fly in the damage. jungle on the Enigma, and last but not least, Silent on that Viper. So, strength of Citrus lineup, they have. Very good gank and very good like hard lockdown single target. I miss and the hexagons, man. Now that you're talking hexagons? about the oh, yeah. the lineup. And Empire has really strong team fight and very good AoE disables, but they're on really long cooldowns. So Secret's just looking for really small skirmishes like this. Big Daddy goes in with the stun and Solo walks into a puppy sniper arrow. MLG no scope mode engaged. Yeah, Puppy's just ridiculous on this Priest of the Moon. Like, he's so good. You know, they actually wanted to reschedule a match the other day, and Puppy said it was too late. I won't hit my arrows. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like 11 p.m. or something that, uh, yeah, it's a few days in advance. They could reschedule another arrow searching. This time, a creep to block it. He is very, he's diligent about all his preparations to make those arrows hit. He was arrested, wants to be feeling happy. His girl will just, no tail will just angrily blast away at a, an idol to prevent it from but the interesting part is the they can't really force these two out of the jungle like enigma can like walk towards them but they can't kill an ogre with boots skywrath is gonna die if he comes and death prophet also doesn't have any chase potential so they can just you occupy even, the dire jungle you can't even harass ogre out with idol on right clicks like if that's like a crystal maiden she's very vulnerable to but ogre has seven armor oh, or resolution six armor right now Mid lane, they're looking for the jump in. Oh, uh, Big Daddy no tail. He missed, he missed the arrow. Close to being raged. Ball bottom lane, Kuro nearly finds a solo kill in Yoki. Team Secret come out hot. Getting those two early kills, getting the Doom off to a good start, and the off lane doing well on their safe lane Necrophos. Everything smooth so far, and they even managed to plop down a Sentry Ward. Maybe Always Wanna Fly does need to rotate because he's just struggling to get anything out of his woods. He's still level one, just hits level two now at two minutes in. See, this is also something cool about Secret in the safe lane, like Necroverse. Um, Necroverse Titan. Titan just dominates, like, let's say, Slark and Void and all these melee saving farmers. So instead, they do a ranged magical damage farmer. Who isn't Razor, <laughs> which is. Yeah, who isn't Razor and also has the Heartstopper Aura that just passively does a ton of damage to Tide Hunter. Terra has opted for a point that still not points in Sadist, so I imagine we'll see a max at second. Probably just a value point in the heart stopper. Uh oh, silent. Trouble. Mr. Sniper's on the move. And the other thing is that they've done a good job of keeping Empire in the dark. Like, you look at this dire vision right now, they have no idea what Big Daddy's up to. And he's gonna wrap around, hugging the cliff to the left. He's got the backstab here. I don't think Empire will be ready for this. In fact, Solo about to walk right into a stun. Arrow follow up already coming in. And the body block is just enough to keep him in position. This will be another kill secured on Solo. Puppy will finalize the deal, but maybe they lose Big Daddy as a trade, and these heroes are fairly low. Are there any points in Nether Tox, or, uh, yeah, Nether Toxin has been skilled up, and Silent finishes off one, looks for a secondary kill. Does he get it in time? Turning on Simba will find it, but also falling to Puppy. Claims that final one, and then a hasted S4. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you. I have a big sword. Goodbye. Solo being chased down, and that's been as a haste turn. S4 somehow managing to run in past him, body block him, and now... Dives him under the tower, has a storm bolt ready, jams it in. Kill secured, a double for us for a bloodbath against Empire. Well, that Their was... jungle is completely off limits after this. This is really smart of them to leave that haste rune there too. They they could have just picked up the haste rune ogre and just run in and club people, but instead they leave it for Sven so he can just mop up everyone afterwards. Well, what do you do now if you're Empire? <laughs> Dyer's mm, bottom tower I, I don't know what options I don't know. Yoki's out of region. He had eight tangos and a salve, and he's now out. So I don't really know what he does. I guess he's going back to bottom with a bottle and tangos. But when you have to spend that much money on 
Okay. An additional set of tangos on Tide who already started with as many as he did, that's a problem. It really delays his item progression. It does indeed. And Resolution's like, where's the rune go on bottom? So they know that that support's down there. Get Kuro. 25 and 3. Not just shutting down Yoki, but also free farming in this bottom lane. And after having cast a few Necrophos games from uh, I-League and the Chinese scene, I will say, Ben, I think this hero is a bit underrated in late game. He's like, good. The, the new Aghanims, well, it's not that new anymore, but the Aghanims that prevents you from being able to buy back is game-changing. And even before that, Reaper Scythe adds 30 seconds to your death timer, period, to all deaths. So, I think his heal and sustain and his damage is actually pretty ridiculous. And Yoki. Oh, not dead yet, but Curl's gonna chase him out. He's got another death pulse, can't get in range for it. I mean, it ends up being like a minute downtime once you get to the 10 minute mark every time you die to that. That's a lot. So look for resolution mid, they find the stun, they follow this up with the arrow. Oh, a little bit too late. They didn't stack their stuns right and TP will be canceled. But he being forced to rotate in. So how's our mid lane looking? S4, he's doing quite well. He's had a lot of help for these supports to be fair, but he is getting his farm on. Man, what does Yoki do on bottom? Look at his HP, he's just <laughs> getting owned by Heartstopper Aura. Better go back to well again. He is closing in on his boots. Uh oh, always want to fly. Oh, are they going to? It's nighttime. He got the ignite up the hill, and now the stun to follow up. Arrow coming through, not able to get the idolons in position to body block. Big Daddy simply doesn't care about all these pesky idolons. They will even split, but it doesn't matter. While that's going on, they do lose their Doom top lane. S4 farming everything. What happened to Doom? He was Viper struck and then just run down with Sarah support, it looks like. And this fence set is hideous. Fence up? Yeah. Cyclopean Helm of the Mono Militus. It's not ours, is it? Oh. I feel <laughs> slightly bad if it were yours. <laughs> if that was ours, it would have called you for play me. But the only thing they kill on resolution, man. I'd just say a home attack. Man, that's bad. Nope. Doom on the top lane, what? on the silent, but it doesn't disable corrosive skin, so I don't think they'll have enough to get the skill. This is very ambitious for fly. Yeah, Zoning Doom. That, in last patch, it would have worked. Yeah, that would have been a kill. Or at the very least, brought him incredibly low. They do have Ravage coming soon, and maybe that's the engine for the comeback here. Getting a fight recap. From the fight much earlier mid. Oh, look for the stun, I always want to fly bottom lane, and they find it again, the puppy arrows! Somebody calm this man down! Death comes He's on fire! Down. Man, how'd they know that he was going bottom? Did they know for sure? I think maybe they just want to get Big Daddy mid. Yeah, well, it wasn't a rune spot time. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Well, yeah, they're just leaving Simba alone, and these three stunners are blowing everybody up. Everybody. Heroes two levels ahead of Yoki. Ouch. Secret. No breaks on the hype train for them right now. Up to a 3k gold lead, a 2k experience lead. There is a massive team fight potential here for Empire. We shouldn't forget that. But at the same time, where I worry is all of their damage beyond those ults comes from Death Prophet and, and Viper, both of whom need to tank up to survive. And neither of whom have been able to tank up. Oh, they see Always Wanna Fly. Are they gonna actually make a move? Always Wanna Fly will actually find Charlie. Zimbra, whatever. <laughs> whatever your name is, dude. <laughs> make up your mind already. Find some Eidolons as well. And they're wrapping around again onto the mid lane. S4. War crying and charging in. He'll be able to close the distance with resolution very quickly. And the, the, the noose is already dead. There's just no way to retreat. Ogre coming through. Arrow to connect. That kill will go. At the same time, though, the Necrophos. Ends up falling bottom lane, looks like he used his ultimate, got a return kill in a two for one engagement. Empire should have come out on top, but unable to do so. That puts the Tidehunter on the sidelines for a very long time. Reaper Scythe was used, still dead for 30 seconds even now. Change really hurt. That puppy will have his Moonlight Shadow pretty soon. Oh, solo. Gets multicast. Arrow coming in to follow that up from low ground to high ground. There's a very underwhelming Star Storm, only level one. Leap away. Nothing really risk there as top lane. The, they dive on the silent using the doom, and this time Sven is here to pump you up. It will be slowed down a bit by the Crows of Skin, but not enough. The kill. The ganking Sven. They play just so well around it, too. Normally you'd be like, what, Sven mid lane? But he's been involved in kills in almost all three lanes at this point.
I think that's what's most impressive with Secret employing a variety Dyer's of dress is, is just that they, it's not like they run something different, but then don't seem like they know how to execute it. Like, they know exactly what they have to do with this draft, which is gank constantly, get up in the Enigma's Grill, don't let them free farm. When they run the Kuroki for Protect 1 Medusa, they play that strat the way it's really ideally meant to be played. Just turtle, be selective in your fights, secure the Medusa's farm, and then go for the timing push once she's big. It's not just that they draft differently, but they know how to play those drafts. And something you can't really say about every team. Like, look at Cloud9 running that ganking draft the other day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think if they practiced it more, they'd probably do it much better. But yeah, Secret was showing a lot of versatility, despite being a relatively new team. Necrophose with a VIT booster. Casual VIT booster. Somewhat unusual, I'd say. I don't know if he's going for like an Atos or something. Atos? But usually people go for like a drums, I'd say. But VIT booster is Could be far a cheaper. Bloodstone, I suppose. Casual cloak, really good too. They don't have that much physical. Aside from uh, Nether Toxin, which is only level Radiance one, and Ghost, which they have attack. the armor for. I mean, this Death Prophet's not going after anyone right now. Face <laughs> boots and a mantle. Or, oh, sorry, a Null Talisman. That almost has his blink, and I think that's where things get really rocky for Empire. Do have Ravage. Maybe they just say, you know what, we just need to five man. We've got big team fight ultimates. Prophet is moving towards the middle lane. Has a DD run online for resolution. He could TP bottom, but seems they want someone to hold this lane out. The other four push in. That may be difficult because Big Daddy No Tail is on the prowl. It oh. is that time for the five man though, and Empire probably should have done this a little bit before, but I mean, now's as good a time as any. Make use of those Eidolons, make use of the uh, GG Exorcism and the five man Ravage, and they'll just push on. S4 already popped God Strength in mid. And that's one thing we haven't done about, just how scary Sven can be Dyer's with Bloodlust on him later on in this game. Radiant's Curious to see what he goes for, but for now. Empire will take a tier 1 bottom lane. Still the better trade being secured here for Secret if they get the tier 1 mid, which it looks like they will. Goes to the Radiant though, nobody managed to get the last hit, so a slight loss of gold there. Still, Empire moving on through. They engage. It's just gonna Secret be... just one step ahead of them, they're already heading top. It'll be super obvious if no one um, defends this mid tower, which it is. They know they're all... Oh, they're fading up the hill. They're waiting for the jump in. They get off the multi -cast. They will need more damage to kill Yoki. Prevent that Ravage. They managed to chain them perfectly, so the Kraken shell is ineffective against all this, but now they do always want to fly. They don't even need to do the Tide Hunter. Exorcism used. They continue to try and focus. Always want to fly down the Necrophos ult. Kuroki secures it. Go back to the bench, man. You're down for 50 seconds, Kuro says. Three heroes dead. This is ugly. They just walked right into that face rush. They they took that fight against much stronger AOE team fight, but they just they know they know that they have the better initiation and the chase stun, so that traction shells are open. How often do you see a team perfectly chase stun someone without having like a doom just so I can't ravage? That was very impressive. Yeah, I think he got a multicast though. It it, it might have like procked after the first multi and then go into the second yeah, multi. Yeah, so true. they might have gotten a little bit lucky because the counter was there. They did get still, a multi. That's, that's just, they played it well. Or now getting slowed down by the Viper, controlled and over. It gets a little overzealous here in the top lane. An important turn for Empire, but maybe not enough. A solo will be caught by the big ugly ogre, that bruising club. Now they use Moonlight Shadow to cover their retreat. It seems there are just a few too many arrows searching for Solo. And Puppy maybe finds another kill here. The, our negative earn charge checking Solo down. He should end up falling. The neutrals actually deny him. But very cooperative from them. Meanwhile, attack. in the river, Yoki comes in. They still have a Ravage online. They'll just let it go right now. He secured one kill on the Doom and looking for a fourth. Oh. A big turn for Empire Those here. Blocks. Boom. Radiance middle tower is under oh, attack. that was just S4 being in no man's land. He cannot solo a Viper. Just Viper strike and run away. And got a little bit too confident there. And that led to a terrible, terrible sequence of events. And that was even with Empire not Radiance having uh, Sentry attack. Wards, too. It would have been a lot worse if they had Sentry. Not having Exorcism attack. or Black Hole, either. That Radiance is the power of their team fight. They can, they can death ball almost anything. Also, Kuroki wasn't there. He was off from the bottom lane. Now has his hood picked has up. I'm think I'm wondering if he actually completes the pipe or just gets this for the durability, but pipe would be very good against Empire. A lot of AoE nukage. Yeah, pipe. Pipe nice is good. Pipe is good indeed. 
Resolution caught out by the stun of S4. Arrow searching for him, not gonna connect. Too far away from Puppy to make that one work easily. Hype is highly underrated, and at least Secret picks it up about as often as other teams should pick it up. That one team fight really swung this game. Secret with a great early roaming, but you go towards the mid game, and now they have to look towards getting their Doom fat, getting the next post farmed up, because their, their supporting cast will not provide the level of control and, and damage that Empire can bring to bear in a team fight, unless they get really lucky with their multi cast. Necrophos walk around with that Heartstopper aura, <laughs> kill everybody. He's pretty tanky. He's also good against other tanky carries in general, which is where I think this pick from Secret makes a lot of sense. You're up against a Death Prophet and the Viper. Both of these heroes generally build tanky, and Passer will be more useful than it normally would be again. Yeah, Death Prophet, though, doesn't have that much HP. She's actually just super underfarmed. Viper, on the other hand, mass, max Krosis again, as well as a mech and power dress. So, I don't know, he's really difficult to take down. He's probably the prime Doom target. I think that's the main concern for Empire. It's just the farm distribution. Their team fight is great, but... I want the Death Prophet to be fat. Uh, and, I, I mean, I get it to some extent they're lacking overall network. Let's have a little bit. So arrow. Off the mark, and now... Looking for the go. Smoke. Silent. Where does he jump? Fading through the river now. Silent with his team close behind him. They're gonna make a go on mid momentarily. Yoki, no blink dagger though, Kuro. Already oh, the completed pipe on long, but with everybody here, that won't be sufficient. Stick charges. Nah. -uh. They Empire. They didn't even have to use anything major. They might be able to push off of this. Yeah. Go for a tier one mid. Just Viper Strike and uh Skywrath ulti. Not bad at all. Now that's of course a worse worst freaking case scenario for Team Empire, but... Or, oh, sorry, for... For attack. Yeah, well, his, luckily his response time is not that bad. I'll go in. Exorcism now used. They still have a Ravage ready. I think an arrow from Puppy clipped him for the backside. They even get a multicast on Silent. Tower will end up going Radiance down. Empire starting to move their way back into this game. The back of several successful engagements. They're still down seven kills. But net worth and experience are basically a draw. Their mobility is leave something to be desired though. The only way they get things accomplished is they move around as packs of four or five. Whereas Secret can kill people with two probably. If it's like Sven and Necro or Sven and Potom or even Doom plus one. So they have better options of it comes to map control. Yeah, both teams just seem to have a fundamentally different way as far as what's best to approach the game. Empire best to death ball and five men. Uh, and fight when your ults are up. Secret, best to spread them have to fight all the time. Look for pick off. They will jump on, always want to fly. Mid level, the arrow from Puppy searching, but a bit off the mark now, if it's not sufficient. So get the kill. Kuro joins the fray, and now, do they really commit to this tight on it? They have a pipe, they're gonna say, screw it, man, we're going in. We'll see the Necro, just to keep him back. Still, they leap forward, S4, off with your head, Tide Hunter. Kill off the fish, mutilate him, and devour him. And now they look for a tier 2 mid. Their wars are really great for the way they play though. It's just highly aggressive behind the T2 even, even when the T1 is up on top. And Empire does not expect this kind of aggression on this side of their map. They probably not going to go for any more, I would imagine. Ravage is... Tidehunter is coming back to life very soon. Did manage to Reaper Scythen for that kill. There should be a Blink Dagger Maybe on try Doom. To sneak a rush. Two. Secret? Secret does not... They do not want to take a fight at Roche, then that's far too risky to... If they take a fight at Roche and they get ravaged, it's over. No, actually. I was just saying that because it looks like they're moving to the pit. Yeah, they... I mean... They also didn't have God Strength anyway. They they do kill Roche pretty quickly, though. With spell. Yeah, they need a Vlad's on Doom, I'd say, before they can really attempt it. I guess, actually, they have sustain from Necropost, too, but they also need the damage output from Vlad's. Certainly not now. They've backed off. Everybody's kind of reset on the side of Empire and group up in their own woods. Solo always want to fly resolution. Like you said, trying to roam in packs. That's really the key, but it does hurt your ability to stay close and farm. We could see that a little bit in Kuroki. He's up to 123. We'll jump in. Stormbolt dodged by a nice Yule Scepter tiny still. Big Daddy Lurk and he gets the zing ding ding. Multi cast is there. A beautiful black hole comes through. They managed to get off the Agon and Scepter ultimate though. That takes Death Prophet out of the game for 70 seconds. Buyback 
is available. Nice Raven coming through from Rogue. Yo, Kate Kuro dropping quickly. They doom Silent, but it doesn't seem like they have the follow up to make this work. Arrow connects on Silent, but doesn't hit the low HP Enigma. And now they look for the doom. Stimba. Charlie on the retreat out, but not sure he escapes from this one. Maybe he will resolution pursuing him. Meanwhile, Puppy, desperately the cat tries to finish off the Enigma, but from the high ground, always want to fly, will poke him down. A double death. The lone survivor, the Doom, who managed to TP out, and a big team fight victory for Empire, who did not use Exorcism and are very good at killing Roshan. May just be headed straight there. They're, they're making a beeline for the pit now. Secret's not respecting the team fight from Empire. They took a fight there, but that was just because they picked out the Enigma really quickly, and no one else was there. But that time, Empire was all there. Viper was there very early on into the fight, and yeah, looks like they actually aren't going to be able to sink an erosion. I mean, all in all, it was four for three, so still pretty good for Secret. Actually, only uh, losing by one hero in the team fight. And they did force out the Death Prophet buyback. That's the the big. Thing. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, jeez. That's even, that's terrible for Empire then. Yeah, because she was dead for like 70 seconds. I, I resolution just looked at that. It's like my team's going ravaged. They're using Black Hole. I got to get in there and make sure we win this fight. But that is her net worth. She's below her own Enigma now. And it's not that the Enigma's farmed exceptionally fast. Death Prophet racking up the deaths. Well, next time she hey, it's dies, in the name, I guess. Next time she dies, she's gonna have a really long respawn timer too. She's one three at this point too, and still really. Easy, as we right now. And they just absolutely latch on. The Empire should not be fighting right now. They don't have any of their ultimates up. Problem is, once one gets caught, like there's just no running. No concussive shot at four, but the chasing power of secret with an extra mobility now. An Agonim, or sorry, not Agonim's a, a Necrophos ultimate. They chase third, four. They're looking for slow. They'll find three heroes. Hmm. Less than 30 seconds, secret. These wards, though, just so close. Game winners, yeah. yeah game winning wards right there. Hey, where are they going? Let's see, secret. Easy this road. time they go to the road. Dormal to break it. Arrow. Does? I think missed the road jam, but S4 is still there to tank it. He gets back, but with more cry, they're really not going to lose HP. Kuroki there to sustain him. It's just very slow going, as you correctly pointed out. But looks like they'll get it eventually. <laughs> what are the Simba has? Looks like the war stomp. Yeah, at this point, I think it's 30 point Ravage, and this was spotted. There's no way they can take this. They have no follow-up. They're in a terrible position to do so. I think, yeah, getting the pack leaders are really nice with them. Two, I guess, yeah. It would, they need more damage. Yeah, it would, it would synergize well. By the way, Kuroki is going Bloodstone. He's picked up now. He's completed Soul Booster. Most... I'd say most Necrophoses I've seen have just gone straight eggs as their first, like, you know, big item, uh, luxury purchases, Radiant's but Roki off to a very powerful start. This does give him a lot of additional HP. He's getting very difficult to bring down. The prize is mine. Chase into the jungle on the silent. Oh, that's not where he wants to be. Moonlight Shadow was used, but doesn't matter. They find silent. Not really sure why they're using that, to be honest. They'll get the kill regardless. I'm not sure why he was there. Meanwhile, Solo also gets caught out the other end of the engagement. Necrophos ult, kill secured, and I love how with Secret, it's like, they already know the one kill's done, and S4's already blinking ahead. Even before the Necrophos ult Radiant's was used, just looking for that next attack. kickoff. They're just so good at bouncing from fight to fight. And now an arrow searching mid? Empire literally being hunted back to their, their base. Not something you see that often at this stage of the game. Uh-oh, Yoki or... Resolution, somebody's gonna die. Honestly, I guess you hope it's Yoki at the point he's got Blink Dagger. It doesn't get it off in time, but now stun. Chase pursued to the ends of the earth and clumped by an angry ogre, sliced by a, and they're slapped by an even more upset Sven, who will end up falling again. 27 to 13. It's these tiny windows when the ults are down that Empire just get, get carved apart. But I don't know why they're splitting up. They were doing well when they were together, but... It might happen again. This time they're bringing in reinforcements. Arrow's searching, but it's already too late. Resolution's been caught out. Should most likely go down here. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Whoa. They're in trouble. Black Hole is online, but always want to fly against Multicast, and he's going to throw it. Manages to connect on two. Doesn't hit Big Daddy, who just kind of runs around in circles, but it's good enough. They are fighting without Kuroki, who's off split pushing the top lane, Puppy. Leap away, used by the Murana. Well, the chase comes through. He'll turn and, and looks for an arrow attempt. And always want to fly, but that ain't happening. Still, Kuro. Bleeding his Bloodstone. Still his Aegis. 900 gold. 
He is very fat, but... They need him in these fights to stop the black hole. That's the second time black hole has crushed them. Poor Doom, but Doom just got wrecked in that fight. They also didn't have enough burst to kill the Death Prophet, even after a nice stun by S4. And she also had that nice illusion block running into the right, popping illusions and just ditching the... Ben. Still, the question remains for Empire, like, what do you do for the next two minutes? Because you have to imagine Secret are going to say, we have Aegis, you've used your ults. Probably not five man down mid, but just keep on going for these pickoff attempts. You push out your lanes and don't get picked off. Fair enough. Well, I mean, to be fair, they can look for ganks with like Blink Ravage into ulti, but that's pretty much only on Marana, I'd say at this point. Is their only really weak hero. Everyone it's, else is super tanky. It's just funny how there seems to be like that pattern in the game. Like, Empire uses all their big ults, wins a fight. Then for the next few minutes, you could just crush them. See if it happens again. If the pattern repeats, or if Empire can break the mold. Well into it now. Empire... We're off to the best start here in the Summit 2. They need to start putting some wins on the board. This is a big opponent if they can take them down as well. Secret looks pretty fearsome. S4. Aggressive top lane, he gets gushed. He's not able to play down time. He does have a BKB TP though. Not sure why he's not using that to be honest. And now it might be too late. Okay. No BKB. Starting to get close to the team. It could have ravaged, maybe. Mm, actually, I don't think it would have killed him. If, yeah, if they insta ravaged. But Empire's really bad at dodging fights that they don't want to take, whereas Secret is much better about it. Like, the fights that they've lost, they're still the ones who initiate. So, the, almost always the fights are on their terms. And if Empire wants to push a tower, they're like, whatever, we'll just trade. Yeah, a lot of it is a lineup issue. Secret are running around with Leap, the mobility of a max rank Bloodlust, Fen with Warcry. These heroes close the gap quickly, and even Doom with Scorched Earth and, and the double blink, so... I think part of it is lineup based, but it's that also just secret being very good at spot picking this spot. Mostly observer wards. And Empire knows how important they are. They've dropped three sentries around their secret shop just to prevent any vision. They should just pick up a gem. Five man. An arrow from uh, from Puppy crashes through in the mid lane. S4 begins to go to work on this tower. The cast will keep everyone bloodlusted. Now, an Aghanim Scepter ready on Big Daddy. Getting our Chinese caster excited. Thank you, SDN. Enemy Ogre has Agadim Scepter. <laughs> there was a few games in I-League, or maybe it's WC, one of them, where like, every time any item got picked up, the caster would immediately mention it. <laughs> I just wanted to be like, he's picked up a bottle, he's picked up a magic wand. G-Branch, Ango. Mercy. Finally, they pick up the gem. So, they, they know, it's all about the vision. The Seeker can't fight blind. Maybe once they have the next Aegis they can, and when the gold lead is like, like 13 to 15,000. But at this point, just a little bit too weak. Well, and now they can actually go for some gank. That's S4, it goes back to BKB in time, he gets a two hero storm off to start it! Look at the damage! Arrow coming through, won't actually connect on anyone. Then the black hole only finding Tamis behind the back lines. They meant to cancel that with a Necrophos ultimate. Doom leaps forward, focusing the Tide Hunter. He's already used Ravage though, so not particularly effective. They end up losing their Necrophos as the trade. Sven also falling, but it may be Puppy who ends up carrying this fight silent. Will there be a deny attempt? Arrow off the mark? No, Puppy in trouble now. Leaps to the high ground, goes for the TP out. Look how low resolution is. Two of the three cores of Empire living life on the edge, but all able to survive. So in the end, two cores of secret for, was that just two supports of Empire? It was. And, and the big ult for that. That's still really big for Secret. The fact, that, the fact that they can take a team fight and break even in terms of kills is a turning point. Before it was it was 4-3, to three. now it's 2-2. Two to two. So you can see the swing of Secret just getting slowly stronger and stronger. But the BKBs on Empire are proving to be very troublesome for them. One on the Viper and one on the Enigma. And he has to use Reapers, Scythe to uh, disable the Black Hole. Ideally, I guess it'd be Doom, but I don't exactly know who he doomed. Time. Uh, he doomed the time, but after he rounded. Wasn't very effective. Secret will move top now. They do have. A, I mean, you talked about wards. Another great ward. Someone will get eyes on resolution, and he's gonna walk right into Big Daddy. Uses the Yule Scepter. The teleports will come, but there's no Ravager Black Hole. Nice silence from resolution. He's doing the all arrow? the heavy lifting on his own. I, I thought the arrow was gonna come immediately after the Yules, and then he wouldn't have had time to silence, and they would just blow him up with double double fire blast.
but at least it didn't turn for the worst for secret An empire showing their straits with the five men but can they not incur casualties in this downtime of black hole look at s4 he's already calling the shots here bottom lane he says rotate around we're gonna kill whoever shows up with farmers and or we'll kill someone rotating the other direction which big daddy happily does pulls those dice out lays them on the table and comes up all sixes Bottom tower is this under was good man. So now, you'd be drinking. <laughs> Doom is pumped up. He has attack leader's aura, he has war cry, <laughs> he has half the madness too, so he Dyer's has like a ton of attack speed and bloodlust. And him, of course, with his ultimate and pack leader. Hero's trying to show off his own damage now, has a DD run picked up. Under onto the high ground we'll go with the pack leaders are. They can actually kill buildings fairly quickly. Black hole still cooling down for some time. Nice blink there from S4. Just oh, no. the no. And then another snipe from Puppy. Connects again. Secret. They'll take the tower, I believe. Kuro still working on this one. Willing to fall in. There's some sort of counter initiation. They have to fight without Black Hole. And the fake back. Secret go right back in. Looking for the arrow, it connects on goal. It's a very short range arrow, but it's good enough that looks like Simba. Searching in another two hero storm mode. S4 keeps on connecting, but the great counter initiating Ravage. Noki trying to turn this one around. Looks like he may succeed. Ogre again with the stun. They haven't addressed the Kuroki problem, though. He still has his ultimate. Where is it? He's silenced for ages. Use it, man. That plus 30 second respawn timer won't worth it. 85 seconds on the sidelines for the Tide Hunter. He will buy back, however. No Ags yet on Kuroki, Gem hits the tech, the Ogre will, of Big Daddy Noto will co collect it, and now they look to retreat out. Kuro, very healthy. He doesn't have a teleport scroll though, so, the, so they gotta stagger this retreat together. Big Daddy has on the side Fire Blast online again. You cannot run in silent, you will die so quickly. I wonder if um, he had an opportunity to Reaper to Viper. Like he, the tide was right there and he was, it was off cooldown, so he's like, okay, I should use it, but he uh, they were really close to catching up with the Viper, and because he turned around to kill the Priestess, and he's a much higher priority target. Maelstrom on the Viper. Saint Yasha on the Viper. What is this build, actually? Well, to be fair, he's not getting focus. He gets doomed, and he, they just, like, kind of ignore him, and he needs to do as much damage as possible. It's a different spin from the usual Scepter build, which is really good at killing a Sven, but they've actually not really had any problems killing a Sven. They have had problems for running S4 from getting a lot of damage before he dies. Yeah. There. But that's going to be hard to stop anyway. When he BKBs, and he's always getting the blink initiations, it seems, it's easier said than done. And Viper Strike doesn't really do anything because he has a ton of attack speed anyway. Yeah. That was a fight without a black hole. Um, but that being said, they had to blow a buyback on their Tide Hunter to hold. They still end up losing the tier 3. and Secret now find themselves one good team fight away from taking their first lane of racks. Not to mention, Ben. Buybacks aren't going to save Empire for much longer, because Kuroki's got his Agadim Scepter. It's coming out right now. This is the, this is honestly the GG item to me. Like I feel with this, Seeker get one pick off, and it's probably game. Well, Lane of Rax, and then well, presumably they can snowball it. They also need to prevent Empire from getting the Roach, That's or else true. the Reaper is not that effective. Also, they have BKB, so it's highly unlikely that the BKB heroes will die to um, die to the Reaper. It'd be nice for the Tide Hunter, I suppose, but they already have Doom to deal with him. So yeah, maybe it's not quite as big as what it normally would be. Still, if you bait out those BKBs, or yeah. even if you just kill the, the Skyrath and make it a 5v4. Or they might need to like Doom someone before the BKB and Reaper him, like Viper or something like that, and just smoke in a road. And Puppy has been scouting with arrows, but I don't know, uh, they, they know, but it's too late. Or they suspect it, rather. Unless they went in this second. Yeah, it's gonna be too late. Exorcism. To claim the stage is secret gradually maneuvering towards the pit. But gradually is the key word. The they don't get there in time. So now their focus should be Viper. Viper should be the Reaper target. They do know Exorcism is down, though. Uh, obviously you're not killing Roche without that. And this may be an opportunity for Secret to take a fight anyway. Moonlight Shadow and then chasing forward. Puppy. Big Daddy might actually get a kill on Yoki. Oh, that was so close. Do they really push in against the Aegis right now? I think so. Resolution's whatever. Death Prophet without... That's true, there's no Exorcism. Without Exorcism, who cares? <laughs> What's going for the Aegis the wrong play? Um, 
I think putting on a Viper would have been better, but they had Viper in the back to make not make it as obvious. So it wasn't a bad play. It was it's risky, certainly. Continuing to maneuver towards the bottom lane. They make this pretty high ground now. Ben does have his Mask of Madness, so he'll kill buildings very rapidly. Exorcism for 70. And in they go. Doom now with his own Aghanim Scepter. This is a big pickup. No more corrosive skin. And if they manage to kill that Viper once, well, then he's not going to revive that. They get a multi cast resolution. Blink in silent. Will get isolated. Caught out. But the Black Hole attempts to turn this. Always want to fly. Pulling two in. But they're still dropping like flies. Rabbit. Not sufficient. Always want to fly. Not much left in the tank for him. As Kuro chases in. There's your Necrophos ultimate. 110 seconds on the sideline. Cannot buy back. Wouldn't be able to anyway, as three minutes on the cooldown and short on cold. He's got three reasons why I can't buy back. I think it's but that over that's that's way to Brax, and maybe two. The black hole did like almost nothing there without the exorcism. They don't have the damage to follow it up. And Viper got doomed, so he had to back off or else he would be vulnerable to getting precise too. So very cool way to deal with all these long cooldown bolts. Like, keep fighting. Yeah, picking a lot that can yeah. fight constantly. We, have, yeah. we don't see too many lineups that don't have team fight lately, but really, the team fight is just the single target damage up. But that being said, Silent is a beast right now with the Maelstrom props. It seems like every other auto tech is one. They'll kill up this man, they'll look for Simba as well, and they'll get that too. So perhaps Empire can spin this one around and at least make a decent trade. They're looking for another stun. Kuroki, he doesn't have his ultimate for 13 seconds, but Big Daddy, the gambler, Radiance again, securing more kills attack. for his team. While that was going on, they lost Puppy. So it is still a three for two in the end for that particular part of the engagement. But, or three for one with a die pack on the best drop there. I think a lot of teams don't offer this sort of strategy because it's predicated on a really strong early game and the support movement by Puppy and No-Tail, as well Radiant's as S4 even, was just attack. fantastic for them and really limited Death Prophet. Look at her farm, she has BKB and Yules. It's 36 minutes in the game. Um, and She's Viper got less net worth than the enemy Ogre. Yeah, and even the Enigma is also pr relatively under farm too with the Blink Dagger and BKB. So they did a really good job of shutting down these two heroes in particular far more than they would normally uh, be shut down. And because of this, they can not really like throw bodies at the fight, but they can take constant skirmishes uh, with their item advantage. Yeah, it is very... And the other thing is, even if you roam well, sometimes your opponents are just... They're ready for it. You know, they scout, they have wards in the right mm -hmm. place, the ganks just don't work. Arrows are a very. Uh, we saw this from DK. Was I cast through? You know, I think it was with Cinderin, but leading into TI4, there was a stretch where they picked the old DK. I mean, they picked Murano, like, first pick, like, eight games in a row. And it just it wasn't working because teams were prepared for the Murano roams, and it didn't catch anyone by surprise. And once those arrows didn't hit, you go to the mid game, you have a support that just doesn't bring that much of the team fights for that farm. And on top of that, the rest of their drafts were normally fairly gank heavy. So, it, it, like you said, it is a bit of a risky strat, and certainly not an every game thing. It's just the cool thing with Secret is there's so many tools in the arsenal. You know? This is just another one they can pull out. There's not a really good comeback plan too. If you lose the early game, you're you're done for. They'll just fight man with mech and lose. So. Them down for 20. Big Daddy gets the jump in. There's your multicast. Looking for the double. It's a solo kill by Big Daddy. Five total done to bring down that Death Prophet now in Agon and Zulti from the Necrophos. My goodness. When, o when Ogre can solo kill off your Death Prophet, you know you've lost. I think the arrow in the base, but it's still... Okay. It'll still just... He's 200 farm. He needs like pipe and heart at this point. This whole does no follow up, no go. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> Poor ex multi just to rub it in his game, man. Well played by Secret. It was a cool strat. I like the early movement from uh, from the Sven and the Marana mid. That was cool. And Empire never really got a chance to fight mid. Like, never was it in the point where Empire was pushing a tower and Secret's like, crap, we have to defend, which is normally what, what you see. I also like the Necrophos pick, just because we don't see him that often. Seems like once he got to a certain point, like, this Wombo combo lineup doesn't really work.